Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Monster Expedition by Amigo. It plays one to four players, ages 12 and up, and it takes about 45 minutes to play. And you will be playing as a researcher for the Royal Monstrological Society, in which you're going to go into three different realms and gather monsters. Now, of course, other uh, researchers are also attempting to gather monsters as well. Utilize your wits and utilize your courage as you go into the different locations and use your die to collect royal monsters and place them into cages. Now, of course, these monsters are going to give you unique powers to help you capture more monsters, as well as you'll be able to upgrade your bases in the regions to acquire more assets in order to capture them. The game will take place over a number of rounds based on the number of cards in the deck, based on the number of players, and whoever captures the most monsters worth the most amount of points by the end of the game is the winner. Let's go ahead and take a look down below, and I'll show you what comes in the game. Welcome to the Monster Expedition, and here we have the game set up for two players, but I'll explain how it works for all players. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to gather three location cards. They're going to actually have numbers on the back to represent which player gets what, and this one here is for player one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and then place them down with the uh, first A side and the number two represented facing you, uh, facing the top, the little underlined area facing you. And you'll have that for all three colors for each player. So player one and player two. You're also going to give each player their own set of tokens. And these tokens represented little cardboard chits here with their own unique color. Uh, you're also then going to go ahead and take all the cards out of the deck that have this type of backing. And there should be a total of seven of them. And you're going to go ahead and place them out onto the board. These are the uh, seven available ones here. The five at the top and the two here. The rest of the cards should have a cage on them with the number 10 on the top right and then and of course the Monster Expedition logo on the bottom left. These will represent points you can gather when you're taking them as cages, or when they're on the field face up, they're going to be monsters that you can pick up. Um, and of course, the starting ones will always be there for every single game. Based on the number of players, we'll determine how many cards are in this deck as well. And when you're playing with less than four players, you'll be using less than the number of cards in the deck. Check the rulebook to see how many cards that will be. Take all the black die, the green, the blue, and the yellow die and set them aside so they are easy in reach of all players. And any extra tokens and any extra locations that you're not using, you can go ahead and set aside for another game when you have more players. The board here can just go ahead and be placed in front of all players so that they're within easy reach so they can see what die faces represent these four different colors of die. The game will also come with a rule book and of course the box which you can set aside because I'm going to explain the game to you right now. To begin the game select a player to begin, maybe the first player or last player to gather a monster from an unknown region or territory. That player is then going to select one of their three locations. When you do so go ahead and move that location up to indicate that this is the location that you're going to be searching in which means that these are the monsters that you can gather. You can only gather sun type monsters which are these guys here. If he or she were to choose blue, then he or she would be able to gather these three monsters, which have the blue symbol, and then finally green, you can gather these ones here. The last card is going to be the monster dealer, which basically just means whenever you have 40 points worth of die here, you are going to be able to utilize this to draw six cards from this cage deck, which can also benefit you in giving you points. So, after you've chosen a location, I'll go ahead and choose this one here, you're then going to gather the number of die indicated at the top of the little tile here, which is going to be two black and one yellow. Two black and a single yellow. You'll take those die and then begin the next phase, which is rolling. And you're going to roll these die, and then you're going to check the numbers. And when you check, you can you can go ahead and gather any amount of die equal to one side. So if you rolled three twos, you can gather all those all three of those twos. If you rolled, for instance, two twos and a ten, you can either gather the two twos or you could gather the ten. So pick a number and then take all those die and bank them. In this case, we rolled a one, we rolled a two and a ten. I'm going to go ahead and gather the 10 because that's a lot of points there. And then I'm going to take the rest of the die and roll them again. And you'll keep doing that. I rolled another one and a two. So I'll go ahead and gather that two and then I'll roll again. And then I've gathered the five. Now, when you roll die, if you ever roll a number that is the same as a number that was banked, so for instance, if I had banked this two here and I then rolled a two afterwards, you're going to lose the highest value die that you banked. So you would end up losing this 10 and then you'll roll again regardless of the number of die that you have. And in this case, I roll a number two. I would then, of course, lose the next highest die I banked, and I would roll this die again, another two, and I would place it on my board as a banked. And I would have only banked two points there. Uh, luckily, that was not the case. Luckily, I rolled a 10, and then I rolled a one, and then I think I rolled a five, but I'll just go ahead and roll again, oh, which was five. Uh, after I've banked whatever I have here that has not been discarded, these are what I'm going to use to gather monsters based on the color. So I've got 16 points here, which means I can gather one cage worth 10, 
or I can choose a monster or monsters down here. So I can take any number of points and cut them up to gather as many monsters here based on their points in the top right, as well as cages. So 16 points, I'll go ahead and take this monster worth 14 points, the top right here. Uh, this monster here is worth two points whenever you gather it face up. And it's also gonna give you a unique ability. And this one here says that you could upgrade your green territory by turning it clockwise. It also says that it's gonna be worth a set, and which means it is after you've gathered a white, a yellow one, you can gather a blue and a green one, and that will net you an extra die, an extra black die, whenever you're rolling in an expedition. And you'll place it next to you, and it'll just go there face up to indicate that that's the amount of points you're going to have at the end of the game, as well as, of course, any abilities that may be long-lasting or be considered set bonuses. After you've gathered all the die that you can possibly gather, you're then going to go ahead and upgrade. And you upgrade these locations based on the numbers represented in the middle. In this case here, the yellow is going to be 1, the blue will be 2, and the green will be 3. I rolled a 1, which means I'll upgrade the 1. You may only upgrade each location once per turn. You can also upgrade a location once on other players' turns. And the only way that works is when another player rolls the number underneath the main number. And it's going to have these two little people under it to indicate that that's the number you can roll. And I'll go ahead and up show you this up close. This is a 2. I can upgrade this on my turn if I roll a 2. This is a 10. I can, roll, I can upgrade this on another player's turn when they roll a 10. So if this was somebody else's turn and they rolled this, I could then upgrade this. Every time you upgrade, it will give you more die, and it can potentially allow you to gain more cards. Like, for instance, when you reach the highest level of value here on this camp, you'll get to draw two of these uh, cage cards, which is very nice. And, of course, when you get to the final uh, the final one here, on, the, on, the, on this the yellow one here, it says four and one, there's a little arrow indicating you can turn this guy over. But once you've gotten all the way to this side here, <laughs> that's the end of it. That's as much as you can get. There's no more die that you can get, no more upgrades you can gather as well. Then, finally, after you have upgraded as much as you possibly can, you'll take the cards from the deck here, flip them over, and place them down here in the field so other players can gather more monsters on their turn. Then, play will pass, and the next player will go. They'll choose their location, they'll take their die based on that location's um, requirements, then they're going to try and gather the uh, monsters based on the location as well. So if I chose blue, I would take these guys here, I'd roll them, oh, there's a seven, there's a six, I'll take the six, and I'll roll again, and I got a six and a seven. I can't take the six, because I already have a six, so I'll have to take the seven, and then finally a roll, hopefully I don't get a six, I got a five, beautiful. I add all these up, gather the monsters, Upgrade if I can, in this case I wouldn't be able to because I have a 5, 6, and a 7, and none of those are allow allowing me to upgrade, and then I'd refresh and pass turn. At the end of the game, which is when this entire deck runs out, everybody's going to get equal turns. And then you're going to add up all the values of the monsters on your field, and in this case that would be 2 points. If you had any monsters that were cages, because you can just buy them from the top of the deck for 10, you'll flip those guys over and you'll add the value of points underneath where the little cage area is. And in this case, if I had these two, I would get two and three points as opposed to four and five, which would give you more points, of course, at the end of the game. Now, these generally do not give you more points at the end of the game, but when you do maximize them, you will get cards uh, from the cage deck that will provide you bonus points. And of course, some of these may provide you bonus points based on their abilities. And that's it. That's how you play monsters. Monster Expedition. Go back and forth, the deck runs out, count up your points, and whoever has the most is the winner. Okay, let's discuss the game. Monster Expedition is a wonderful board game. This game involves rolling die and attempting to gather the correct numbers and securing them as you collect more die, or roll more die, and try not to roll the same numbers that you have stored. Now, the more that you upgrade your bases in the different realms, the more likelihood that you're going to run into duplicates, but also the more likelihood that you'll get more numbers and higher numbers at that. And so if you can play your cards right, or your dice right, you'll be able to acquire quite a lot of currency in order to gather certain monsters. Having monsters is important, because not only do you gather sets to allow you to use more die, using these die to upgrade your bases, and also, of course, the cumulative total amount of your points based on those die to acquire monsters, um, but all of these things work in tandem together in order to net you more points throughout the game. Do you want to gather cages, which are generally cheaper, but can give you a variety of points from one to three, or do you want to secure monsters, which can gather you more sets, cost a bit more, but also provide unique abilities that let you progress throughout the game. 
The game itself has a high quality production rate. It's got beautiful cards that are nice and thick and you're not going to run any problems with those guys. The main board of the game works well and shows you the different colored die and what is available to you based on the die roll. So when you're rolling a one of the uh, yellow die here, it, you can range from 1 to 10 and it tells you the different sides of the die, indicating what is uh, likely for you to roll in the game. Another thing to note too with the die is as you roll them, you can not only upgrade your own bases, but you may upgrade your opponents and choosing to collect certain die will prevent or provide your opponents with benefits to increasing their bases. So it's kind of like a catch up mechanic. Utilizing black die is nice, but because they only all have one through six, it's very likely you're going to roll duplicates. So you do you want to roll your big die and gather its points earlier or wait in order to avoid having to remove it due to the fact that you misrolled. There's a lot of choices involved in the game. And of course, the more you gather and the more you upgrade your camps, the more die you roll, but it also can potentially backfire on you as well. There might be even a little sweet spot. But as you upgrade your camps, you're going to gain unique things like cages and new monsters that will increase the amount of points that you get. So it's all about pushing your luck and how much you want to push based on what you roll. The selections and choices you make are important, and I would always suggest to gather as many of the die that you roll duplicates of, regardless of the number, to secure those points in the bag that will then allow you to gather monsters. So you can only select certain monsters based on the location you chose and how much you, how many points you rolled and the die that you rolled. So be aware of that and choose wisely. The game is going to be set to be about even no matter the number of players because you remove cards from the deck based on the number of players, which makes the game function at the same amount of time, regardless of the number of players. I love the monster abilities. It gives you unique aspects to the game that allow you to upgrade your base camps, regardless of whether it's your turn or not. There's other ones that will allow you to upgrade your base camps individually as you gather them, gain new die, and of course collect sets of them to gain new die as well. So you might end up rolling anywhere between uh, six and even maybe ten die on your turn, and those can greatly benefit you, but also greatly cost you if you're not super careful. Uh, I played this with Callie a bunch of times, and Callie specifically enjoys the game. However, she does not like the fact that uh, as you increase your value, it also increases the cost or chances of you uh, failing a roll at the end, making you sacrifice your greater die. You have to be okay with that and understand when you choose to select die that have a greater value, you are also more likely to lose them as you progressively roll throughout the game. Uh, it's just part of how the game works. Uh, I personally really enjoyed this aspect because it kind of made me decide, do I want this 10 or two fours? The two fours will most likely not be as uh, important when it comes down to sacrificing them and I can reroll this die later to hopefully net me a 10 or even a nine at the end of the round, securing it so I don't lose it. And so you have these kind of options when you're rolling die. It might not seem like you do, but in fact, there is a lot of choice when it comes to rolling these die. It's just whether you want to take those precautions or not, or go for broke. And when you can go for broke and succeed, there is great power in, in that aspect. And of course, even the monster uh, trader or the monster dealer here, this one is basically going to net you six cards for only 40 points when normally cages cost you 10. So if you utilize that, you can gain a lot of points. Another thing to note too is when you gather monsters from the field, you'll be putting new monsters in and adding your tokens on them. Uh, those tokens kind of add to interaction in the game because there's not a huge amount of player interaction in the game other than what your opponents roll and sometimes abilities. But the fact that uh, when new cards come out and you have to place your tokens down, that will provide an added benefit of do you want to secure those monsters uh, and attempt to steal other players' uh, monsters with those tokens on them? Or are you more interested in attempting to just gather cages? So you have a, a variety of different choices throughout the game. Uh, the artwork, solid, beautiful artwork. Really, really, really like the art for this game. There's a ton of different monsters from the different locations locations and having to select the different locations and also upgrade your monsters or, a ga or gather new monsters based on that location is super great. There's a unique monster that's kind of a wild, but they get progressively more pricey as the game goes on. It becomes more difficult of a choice as to whether you gather two or three cages or just a single monster that might give you a set, but maybe not give you as many points. But the set provides you extra die, which will progress you throughout the game. When you choose to do this is important. Does your opponent's uh, token uh, reside on the specific card that you want to gather? Maybe Maybe it's worth getting that card, even though it's worth less points, but it steals points from your opponent. You can make those kind of choices in the game. All the tokens are very nice. The die is really accessible and easy to read, easy to understand, different colors, making it easy to tell the difference between them. And of course, how your locations work as far as upgrading is very simple, straightforward. You basically roll the die, check, roll the die again. After you finished rolling your die, removing any die that you might have gotten duplicates of, then you proceed to gather monsters 
take their effects into, into, into consideration, then upgrade your locations and pass. That's the entire game. Very straightforward. A lot of complexity, a lot of strategy, but very simple and easy to understand. This game here, great game. If you're interested in taking a look at uh, Monster Expedition, <laughs> there'll be a link down below in the description. Thank you so much guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Monster Expedition by Amigo. Definitely my favorite game of their titles so far. Really enjoyed this one here. If you're interested, like I said before, there's a link down below in the description as well as of course you can go ahead and subscribe to this video. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out and it will give you more notifications for when we release more content for more reviews for more games just like this one. Speaking of this game here, we play games live on the live stream every Wednesday and hopefully we'll be playing this one here, but we play games just like this one every week, Wednesday on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook so you can choose your platform and watch us play, earn new games, and of course uh, there's, there's giveaways and other options there. Discord, you can access that. We'll be doing uh, auctions and all that kind of good stuff here. It's been a, a crazy couple months here because we just finished our Moonshell, the a Mermaid board game campaign. Backer Kit is now underway. You can go ahead and pick up that game via Backer Kit. Link down below in the description to see Callie's game and our next game will be underway. Once we get manufacturing on this one and the games get shipped out, we want to make sure you guys get your games first before we progress to our next project. Uh, regardless of that, thank you Patreon so much for supporting us here. We're giving you more updates on our latest games. We'll give you some updates on Moonshell as well. Some little behind the scenes th things there. And of course, we will share them on, um, on a Kickstarter as well, but maybe not in as much detail. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to hunting monsters and gathering their pelts with you next time.